Welcome back to Little Bit of My Closet. I thrift and resell secondhand clothing for a living, and today I went to three different thrift stores and thrifted for almost eight hours, and I came home with 72 items, which I think has to be a personal record for me. But today I'm going to go through everything that I found, why I picked it up, where I plan to sell it, and just give you a little bit of information about what my thought process was when I was picking up these items. I did go ahead and photograph a few of these to list on Poshmark, but none of them are listed yet, and I haven't researched any of them. So I'm going to give you a ballpark for what I think I'll probably list them at, but for the most part, I'm not quite sure. But I have a ton of bolos in my bags right now, so I'm very excited to show them to you. If you're new here, hello, my name is Lily, and I sell secondhand goods and clothing for a living, and I absolutely love my job. I sell clothing online on Poshmark, eBay, Instagram, and on my website, and then I have an antique booth where I sell hard goods here in Oklahoma City. Then I also attend some in-person markets where I do some in-person selling as well. But all of these items that I have today, I'm going to be listing online on Poshmark, eBay, Instagram, or my website. As you can tell, it was a trash bag day at the thrift store, which are my favorite days, which means I got a lot of stuff at each store that I went to. So I have three gigantic bags to go through. I typically have them all separated for you so I can show you where I'm putting things, but I just brought these home. I haven't researched anything, so I'm just going to show you as I go through how much I paid for them, what I think I'm probably going to list them at, and then just teach you a little bit about all the items that I picked up. If my words are a little bit twisted or I'm a little bit low energy, I literally started thrifting at 9 o'clock this morning. I got home at 5 o'clock. I made dinner. I brought all the stuff in, and now I'm doing this. So I'm a little bit tired. My brain is a little bit foggy, and I haven't had much human interaction today besides just the people at the thrift store. So I apologize in advance. But let's go ahead and get started. First up, these things on top, I went ahead and photographed to list online, but I have not done any research of them yet. So let's start with those. First up, I have this Patagonia vest. It's the fleece material. It's a 2014 style, which typically in most brands, I want to buy things that are like 2018, 2019, or newer. But in Patagonia, it really doesn't usually matter the age of the item. If you don't know, on Patagonia, on the back of the tag, there's a style number, and at the end of the style number is the year that it was made. And if you just search that style number into Google, nine times out of ten, it's going to come up and have a photo. Um, so this is a Patagonia men's vest. It is a size large. I got this on a new rack at the last thrift store. I just took the tags off of this, but I bought this one for $7.99, um, which I'm happy to buy Patagonia for that. And I assume I'll list it around 40, but I have not done any research on any of these. Next up, this is one of my favorite brands to find. This dress is by Hill House. If you don't know, Hill House is known for their nap dresses, is what they call them, which is basically like a house dress that you can wear in the house or wear it out, obviously. This pattern is actually a discontinued print, and it seems to be rather good just from a quick Google search. This, I think, is the navy tartan plaid. Um, but this is their Ellie nap dress, which is one of their most popular styles. But they have all different kinds of styles of dresses, pajamas, and just different things by Hill House. Um, but I assume I'll probably be listing this around 100 to 150. Really, with Hill House, the comps are all over the place because it depends on the pattern and the style. And if the pattern or the style is discontinued, then the price skyrockets for resale. But that's what I'm assuming for this, but remember that brand, Hill House. Next up, I have another dress. This one is by Abercrombie, and it is a super cute new style. It has these puff sleeves in this smocked bodice with a corset style front. Abercrombie does really well for me in these newer styles. I don't pick up anything old, but anything new that I can find a stock photo for does really well. This dress is a 2023 style, which is great, my ideal situation. This one is an extra extra small, which is a size that I don't typically pick up, but in trendier brands they seem to do just fine. I don't know what all this is at, but I'm assuming around 50. Next, one of my favorite categories of this brand to find, J. Crew Blazers. This J.Crew blazer is the park blazer, and it's in a wool tweed material. J.Crew blazers do really, really well for me. A lot of them fly off the shelves, and even the ones that sit for a while still sell for a good amount of money. Um, this is the park blazer, and it is a 2019 style. It's in this green color. It is 100% wool, and it's a size 4, and I assume that I'll probably list this around 75. Next, I have that same blazer, but in purple, and this one is brand new with tags. This one is a size 8. This one's a 2020 style. Um, but it is the exact same blazer, just in a different size and a different color. I assume I'll probably list this one around 100 since it is new with tags. These J. Crew blazers have two different tags. One of them has the cursive tag, and one of them has the all caps tag. The cursive one was from like 2018 to 2019, I want to say. The all caps was 2020 and newer. And then now they have a couple of other variations, but those are the typical newer tags that you're going to see on J. Crew items. I think I've already gone over this in one of my last videos. But J.Crew has a style number on all of their tags, so if you go to the inside tag, there's a style number, and you can just look that up into Google. It's going to give you the name and the photo of the item that you have. Next, another one of my favorite brands. This is Reformation. This is a linen Reformation dress. It's a little off-the-shoulder um, plaid dress. This is the older Reformation tag, the one that has this sheer tool kind of material. The newer one is just a super skinny, like, skinny tag that says Reformation. 
Um, but in good styles, any Reformation does well for me. Um, this seems to be a really cute style that still seems pretty trendy. This one is a size 6, and I assume that I'll list it around 100. Next, another amazing brand to remember. This is Ula Johnson. I've only found this a couple times before, and it always does so well for me. The tag is falling off. That is a con of a lot of expensive brands, is they only tack their tags on the corners, which means that it often falls off. But this one is Ula Johnson. That's what the tag looks like, and it's this gorgeous midi dress. It buttons down the front and has these gorgeous dolman balloon sleeves. It seems to be a pretty new style. I think that it said it was over $350 new. I assume I'll list it around $150. It is absolutely gorgeous and it is a size 2. Ula Johnson is known for their dresses and so mostly their dresses are going to do the best. But I pick it up no matter what the style is. These are all brands and styles that I would pay up a little bit for. These I actually got all at thrift stores. I meant to be telling you the prices. All the dresses in those were $8.99 and all the blazers were $6.99, so those were very good prices. I did not have to pay up, but I would pay up for those items if I would have found them priced up or at a Vice Trade store. Next, I got this denim jumpsuit. It has these big puff sleeves and bell bottom hem, and then the back is completely open. The brand on this is Denim by Flying Tomato, which is just a boutique kind of brand. So a lot of small businesses wholesale this and then sell it at their boutique. So I did find a cute stock photo for it, but I'm going to do this in my Instagram story sales most likely. It is a size small, and I'll probably do it for around $35. These puff sleeves are still really in, so I love finding any kind of style with that. I actually went to the mall the other day for the first time in a long time, and it seemed like pretty much every mannequin in every store was wearing wide leg and bell bottom pants, so it seems like that is here to stay for a while. Next, I have not decided if I'm going to keep these or sell them, but they're these vintage cargo jeans. Typically when you find these, they're a low rise. These are a nice high rise with the cargo style back and pockets. The brand is Moda International, just a vintage brand. They're a vintage size 4. If I do sell them, I'll probably sell them for around $35 to $40, um, but I might keep them. I have not decided yet. Next I got is vintage sweatshirt, and I love when the vintage sweatshirts have this faux collar underneath. This one looks like a mock neck or a turtleneck, but it has this bare graphic on the front with the birdhouse and the little flower box and it is super cute. It is from 1990, no it is from 2000. Um, so I'll probably sell this on Instagram for around $30 to $35. I really am slacking with telling you how much I paid for these. This I paid $3.98. The jeans I paid $3.98. And the jumpsuit I paid $3.98. That was the magic price I guess at that thrift store. Next I have another vintage sweatshirt and this one was only $0.99 cents, which is why I grabbed it. Um, it's not really anything special, it's just a vintage graphic sweatshirt, but anything that has a year on it seems to do pretty well for me. So this one is from 1987. It was an anniversary um, kind of sweatshirt for a local business in Oklahoma City. It is a size medium, and for a dollar, I was happy to grab it, and I'll probably sell it for around $30. Next is a J. Crew Factory shirt. Um, J. Crew Factory is like the lower brand or the off brand of J. Crew. So their items are usually cheaper. Typically, my J. Crew Factory, everything's 50% off whatever the J. Crew price is. So it's a good deal, but a lot of their items are only there temporarily, and they're still made with the same quality as normal J. Crew mostly. So you can usually sell it for a pretty good amount still. Um, this one is a size extra large, and it has this pinstripe pattern with little ruffle sleeves. I sold this shirt in a different pattern in just regular J.Crew a couple weeks ago, so I felt confident grabbing this one, and I got it for $3.98. I'll probably sell it for around $25 to $30. Next is just a vintage sweatshirt. This one is Starter Brand. Um, starter Brand does really well for like starter jackets, so if you see a vintage bomber jacket, it's Starter Brand logo. Um, I would definitely pick it up, but this is a starter sweatshirt, and I love that the cuffs in the hem were not um, cuffed, like they're loose. This one is a size, I think it's an extra large. It's the size covered up. I got it for $3.98. It needs to go through the wash, but anything Oklahoma does pretty well for me since I am from Oklahoma, so I have a lot of Oklahoma girls who follow me. Um, this is just an OU sweatshirt, and I'll probably sell it for around $30 to $35. I don't think that I've talked about this in this video, but I also sell style bundles, so I have a video that goes through my style bundle process and what that means. But basically, I style people if they're looking for specific pieces or they're looking to change or update their wardrobe, I style them. So I also got several items today for my style bundles. This is one of those. This is just a vintage sweater. Got it for $2.98. It's just a size large vintage chunky knit sweater. She had a lot of um, black crew neck sweaters on her board, so I wanted to make sure to get one of those for a bundle. Next, this is an anthropology top. It just has these ruffle details on the top and on the sleeves. It's a long sleeve v-neck. 
Um, it's a size extra small, but I got it for $2.98, and I assume it'll sell for around $25. This is another style bundle piece. It is just a little striped turtleneck. Um, this one, the brand is Talbots. Talbots is great quality, but it doesn't have great resale for basic pieces like this. But it's perfect for if you're looking for a striped turtleneck, which she was. So I grabbed this for $3.98. Next, I got this for me. Um, this is just an H&M top. Um, I got it for $2.98, that's why I grabbed it. But it's a puff sleeve, long sleeve kind of top, but in the back it has these high details, and there's this Ghani shirt that's been super popular all over TikTok and Pinterest, and I've been keeping an eye on it in case I ever find something like it at a thrift store. But I thought this looked like it in the back, so I think I'm going to wear it backwards, like that Ghani top, and then whenever I'm ready to resell it, I'll just sell it. That is a huge pro of reselling, is there are so many things that I find that I like, but I could just wear it once or twice and then I can resell it. People ask me all the time how I don't keep more things. That's because I get my fill just by wearing it once, and then I can get something else the next time. So that's what I'm going to do with this top. Next, I got this sweater dress. It was only $2.98, so I could not leave it behind. It's just a boutique brand, um, but it is just a chunky cable knit sweater dress. I thought it was so cute, really for any season, and it reminds me of the Rory Gilmore sweater that she wears in Gilmore Girls, which also sells so well for me. So this I got for $2.98, and I'll probably sell it for around $30, and it's a size large. One more style bundle piece. This is a vintage blazer. It is a wool blazer by Leslie Fay. It's size 8. I got it for $4.98. Um, this style bundle client had a lot of vintage blazers like this on our board, so I wanted to grab one. And I love that it had this gold button. That gold hardware just looks so much more high-end, so I wanted to grab this for her. Next, I just have a vintage handmade sweater. It's just a hand-knit sweater. It's this dark green color. Um, hand-knit vintage sweaters do really well for me on Instagram. I got this for $4.98, and I'll probably sell it for around $30 to $35. But it's a great chunky knit material and it looks really high quality. These next couple, I need you to see my vision. So just imagine what I'm saying, okay? They are two sets. First, we have this set that is pants and a matching vest. Okay, so matching brown vest. This is Pendleton, so vintage Pendleton. I don't always pick up vintage Pendleton. Um, some of it does well, like men's blazers or men's shirts. But in women's, I don't normally pick it up, but I've had a picture on my Pinterest for probably years at this point of this matching brown vest and pantsuit, and I just thought this was like literally exactly what I was looking for. I don't think it's going to fit me. I think I'm going to have to sell it, um, which is probably better anyways. That's why you're here, but it is this vest with these pants that people can wear. This is a top, and that is a pants, or wear it as a layering piece. I got it for $8.98. I think that it'll probably sell for around $40 to $50. It was just too cute and too cool to leave behind. And Pendleton is such great quality that I'm always happy to pick it up when I can. <laughs> Next is another set. It is this knit midi skirt. I don't know. Okay, I think that's the front. Knit midi skirt with a matching knit sweater which again, I've had pictures on my Pinterest board of matching sets like this, and they're so hard to find at a thrift store. So for $6.98, I was happy to grab this, and I'm going to make the vision come to life and sell it on Instagram, probably for around $40 to $50. Matching sets of any kind are really popular right now, so whether it's sweat sets or leggings and bra sets, like to dress down or to dress up, like suit sets or um, like a top and a skirt that go together, any of that does really well right now, and it's very popular. So if you see it for a good price, definitely pick it up. On to the next bag. Next bag is actually the first store that I went to. This was the second store that I went to. First up, I just have these free people, We The Free Pants. We The Free Jeans don't do very well for me. I'm not sure they do well for anyone. They still have a very high average sales price. I think they're only about $68 to $98 new, so there's not a ton to be able to resell them for. But when they're in cute styles, they still do okay for me. These are a size 26. I got them for $4.98, and I'll probably sell them for $25 to $30. Next, I got this Anthropology midi dress. Um, it is by Saturday Sunday by Anthropology. On Anthropology items, you can know if it's a newer item if it says by Anthropology on the tag. They started doing that within the last few years. It's an extra small, and it's just a t-shirt midi dress. It's supposed to look like denim, um, which I think is cute, but it's just a t-shirt midi dress, tank top. It'll probably sell for around 25 to 30 but I haven't looked at the piece. Some of those surprise me. Um, some of the dresses that are even just casual like that do really well. So I'm excited to look that one up and see. Next, another new to me brand. This brand is Outer Known. I actually thought it was um, Urban Outfitters when I first saw it because it has a similar skinny little tag as Out From Under. But this brand is Outer Known. This is a linen jumpsuit, like broiler suit kind of situation. 
Um, this kind of style is really popular too. Free People sells a lot of items like this, so I picked it up based on style initially. It is $6.98, and the comps look like it should be around $50 to $75, which I was very pleasantly surprised with. That's a brand to remember, out or known. Next, this is absolutely ridiculous, but I could not leave it behind, and I, I'm obsessed with it. It's this vintage sweater that says Frog Town on it, and it has an embroidered frog with a literal frog town behind it. Um, any kind of funky vintage sweater I like to pick up, but it doesn't always do the best. But I've actually gotten a lot of interest in this already, so I am excited about this one. It is a size medium, and I got it for $6.98, and I'll probably sell it for around $35. Next is a Polo Ralph Lauren sweatshirt. I really only pick up Polo Ralph Lauren if it's, of course, Polo Bear. Anything that is Polo with Bear on it, I get. Or if it's American Flag. Anything Ralph Lauren with the flag on it, I get. Or if it's a cute graphic sweatshirt like this. This one is just a basic graphic sweatshirt and it says Navy Yard on it. It's just a cute little vintage kind of inspired crew neck and I think that it should do well so I'll probably sell it for around 30 My piles are getting a little bit out of control. Next I have a J. Crew tweed dress and it has this cute little belt on it. This one is a size 2 and I got it for $6.98. Anything that is like office wear, professional wear by J. Crew does pretty well for me. This one also is a 2019 style, so it's a little bit newer, so I was happy to pick it up. And I haven't looked at this specific piece, but dresses like this typically do like 40 to 50 for me. Next, I kind of got this just because I felt like it was going to be good. It did not have a tag on it up here. It's just this USA sweatshirt with the different color sleeves. Um, but in the inside, it has a tag that says that it's made in LA and 100% cotton. So I knew that it had to be a little bit expensive, at least new. Also, this style I've seen on Brandy Melville, so I feel like one of them had to have copied the other one. Um, but it is 100% cotton, made in the USA, and it's a popular style. Anything USA is doing really well for me right now. So I'm thinking that it can't do, be too bad. I got it for $6.98. I don't think I mentioned this, but everything that I got at the store was 15% off because I have a discount card at this specific store. So I got it for a little bit less than that, and all my cost of goods ended up averaging out. So I got this for $6.98. I'm hoping it's good, but I honestly have no idea what I'm going to sell it for. Next, this is another fun brand. These are Skims shorts. Skims is the Kardashian brand that has a lot of loungewear um, and shapewear. These are just like the basic, I can't remember what they're called, but like, they're like the fuzzy shorts. It initially like was made to be worn with the matching top, but they do not have the top at the thrift store. These are an extra, extra small to extra small, so it's not the best size, but I was still happy to get it for $3.98. Um, I don't know what it'll sell for, but I'm going to guess around 30 but I never can pass up skims. And some of the skims pieces will do very, very well, so make sure to remember that. The tag honestly doesn't look like anything. If you don't know that it's skims, you would not know. Um, so memorize that tag. It is very, very basic, and you can barely even see it on there. But skims is a good brand to pick up. Next, I got this Olivia Rodrigo tour merch hoodie. It says Sour on the front, which is one of her albums. And then on the back, it has this kind of graphic. It's like a distressed kind of hoodie. Um, any kind of tour merch or hoodie that is recent as well for me. I actually found a Taylor Swift one, a Taylor Swift Eras Tour hoodie of all things last year, like during the Eras Tour, and it sold for almost $100. So I was very happy with that. This one is obviously not going to do that well because it's a little bit older and it's not quite as prevalent, but it should still do at least $30. So make sure to look up tour hoodies whenever you see them. Next is this blazer by Cabby. Um, I've said this before, I'll say it again. Some Cabby is awesome, some Cabby is awful, so make sure to look it up. Cabby has a style number on all of their tags. It's a four-digit number that if you look it up on Poshmark or on Google, it's going to come up and you're going to be able to get a picture and a name. This style seemed to be pretty good whenever I looked it up in the store. It's just a basic blazer kind of jacket. It is a size 8 and I got it for $4.98 and I don't know what it'll sell for, but I'm going to guess around $40. Next, this is another exciting find for me. It was a brand that I did not know. But it looked expensive, so I looked it up. The brand is R13. I don't know really anything about it other than it is expensive. These pants are the crossover trousers. So they have this crossover waist, and they're just a plaid trouser pant. Um, they are brand new with tags, and I got them for only like $2.98, so you can never pass that up. The comps seem to be really good when I glanced at them, like over $100. It seems to be a really expensive brand, so make sure to remember that, R13. Next, I actually have another Pendleton piece. This is just a basic Pendleton jacket, and this is a newer style. It doesn't say anything on the tag, but I know that this is the new Pendleton tag, um, just based on what it looks like. I got it for $6.98, and for the style, I could not leave that behind. I have not sold much new Pendleton, and I think this might be women's, and I really have no familiarity with selling women's Pendleton, so I don't know what that'll be like, but I was happy to pick it up. 
I assume most people know about Pendleton, but it might just be more prevalent where I live. But Pendleton is mostly known for their wool apparel and blankets. So we have a Pendleton blanket on my bed. My husband loves vintage Pendleton, but it's just a very popular wool brand and more like Western wear and also Native American inspired kind of brand. They also have some partnerships with the national parks and with other different brands. A lot of their stuff sells for very high amounts, but not all of it. So you have to look it up. Any of their blankets are going to do amazing. I had a Pendleton OU stadium blanket and it sold for $150, I think, within a few weeks. Um, any of their vintage shirts do pretty well. Sweaters do amazing, vintage sweaters. Any kind of Pendleton, I'd look it up. It is just going to do a lot better if it's wool and if it's a vintage print. Next, I got these vintage 1970s bell-bottom pants. I was afraid they were fast fashion when I first found them because they're just like a thin material but they have a vintage tag on the inside, um, but it's definitely old and it has a lot number, so I knew it was an old tag. They're just like 70s bell bottoms. I thought they were super fun. I got them for $3.98 and I'm sure I'll probably sell them for around $30 to $35. Next is a brand that I almost never pick up anymore. The brand is Blank NYC, but this was a super cute blazer and I briefly looked it up and it seemed to have pretty good comps. It's just a velvet blazer by Blank NYC. Um, it's an oversized fit, which is very popular with blazers. I got it for $6.98, and I don't know what it'll sell for, but it seemed pretty good, so I'm thinking around $50. Next, I got this vintage bomber jacket. It's plain in the front, but on the back, it is embroidered, and it says 1984 intramural flag football base runner-up. So this was from someone who was stationed in Korea um, from the U.S. military, and they were playing flag football for their intramural league, which I just thought was super cool. I love any piece that has a story. So I just love that. Um, I'll probably put this in my antique booth, but I'm not 100% positive. Um, I paid $9.98 for it, which this jacket specifically was not worth $9.98, but when it averaged out, I thought it was going to be worth it. So I'll probably put it for around $40 to $50 in my booth. Next, I have this oversized Airy turtleneck sweatshirt. Airy does really well for me on Instagram for any kind of lounge piece. This is a size extra large. Um, for me, larger Airy sizes do better. I got it for $4.98, just a basic sweatshirt, and I'll probably sell it for around $28. This is another brand that I used to always pick up, and now I'm a lot more hesitant with it. The brand is Zaya. It's an activewear brand. It's kind of like an MLM structure, so people sell Zaya consumer to consumer. So it definitely has a following. It's pretty popular, but not as popular as it was a few years ago. But this was a size 16, 18, and they're the pleather style pants, and I feel like this style is still pretty popular. Um, I looked it up, and it looks like a lot of are listed and sold for around $40, so I'll probably list it at that. I got it for $3.98. Next, I got this Patagonia jacket. I think this is the Los Gatos jacket because I've had the vest version before. This one is a women's medium. It was March 1996, which is way too much to pay for this specific jacket. But I got a lot of other things for so cheap that I decided to go ahead and grab it anyways. It's a popular style, and it's in really good condition. Anything this Teddy style does well for me. Um, so... Grab that for $19.96. It will not sell for that much, probably around $50, um, but it'll all even out with my cost of goods. Next, I got this Y2K midi or maxi skirt. It has this cute little floral print that will be so cute for spring, a little slit on the side. Midi and maxi skirts are so popular for me right now, especially in floral prints or satin materials. Um, that seems to be very popular for winter and going into spring, wearing with an oversized sweater or a t-shirt or a sweatshirt. Um, dressing it up or dressing it down. This one is Vintage Herald's. It is a size 8 and I got it for $3.98. I'll probably sell it for around $28 to $30. Next, I got this embroidered sweatshirt that just says Bride in these colorful letters. I have a lot of young and middle-aged women who follow me, so I have a lot of brides on my page. I always have people who are shopping for their honeymoon or for their bridal party, their bachelorette party, so I decided to grab this because I'm sure I have someone who's looking for something to wear on the day of their wedding or during their bachelorette party. This one is a size medium and I got it for $4.98. I'll probably sell it for around $25. Next, I have another midi skirt. This one is a boutique brand, um, Molly Green, just a boutique wholesale brand. It's a size large and it's a cute like spotted material, but like I said, any kind of midi or maxi skirt is doing great for me right now. But that's for $3.98 and I'll probably sell it for around $25. Next, I have a pair of shoes. These are Bionics. Um, anything that is ballet flat is very popular right now, especially with these bows. I have a pair of red velvet ballet flats that I got at J. Crew. There are so many other brands that are selling them, and they're saying very popular. Bionic is a comfort wear brand, so I like to grab it when it's in a good style. And um, These are a size 9, which I feel like larger sizes and comfort brands do better for me. They're a super cute style. They're good condition. I got these for $4.98, and I assume they'll probably sell for around $40. Next, I got these Levi's. They're the baggy boot, which I had never seen that cut before. 
They're this brown um, dyed material, which again, I have never seen this color before either. They're size 24, which is not the best size to grab, but in this popular of a style, smaller sizes do well because a lot of teenagers and preteens are shopping for them and a lot of them are smaller. So I got these for $4.98. I assume they'll probably sell for $40 to $50 and they have super cute stock photos and they're still very current, so I think they should do well. If you don't know, Levi's have a number on the back tag that says PC9 and then a bunch of numbers and letters after it. If you search PC9 and then all those numbers and letters after it into Google, almost always the name and the style of those jeans are going to come up and you can usually find a stock photo as well. So that is a great way to be able to find the name and the photo for your Levi's jeans. Also, newer and more valuable Levi's jeans are going to have this skinny tag across the back. The more expensive ones, the ones that aren't sold like at normal department stores, are going to be embroidered onto that tag. So for instance, this is embroidered baggy boot and it's a skinny tag, so I knew that it had to be a new and current style. In Levi's, there are a lot of different popular styles, but I would say if you can memorize baggy, ribcage, and wedgie, those are three styles that are very popular in different variations. So anytime I see a baggy, a ribcage, or a wedgie, I look it up automatically to see if the comps support it, and I typically end up grabbing them. The last thing that I got at this store, a lot of you are going to think these are ridiculous, but they are Y2K LEI platform sandal shoes. Um, they're very like brat stall kind of style, which Gen Z really likes. Um, so they have like the straw straps and these chunky platform soles, square toes. I'm going to guess they're very early 2000s, around 2002 to 2004. I actually had someone on Instagram who said they had these in the early 2000s. But Y2K style shoes are very popular for teenagers and early 20s people like me right now. Um, these are a size 9.5 and, and I got them for $1.48, so I could not leave them behind. Especially if you find certain brands like Demonia or Fry in Y2K styles, they're going to do super well. But any kind of style like this, I like to pick it up. Oh, also Steve Madden Slinkies, same thing, early 2000s shoes that do really well. But anytime I find this kind of style, I like to pick it up, um, especially if it's not dry rotted. So if you don't know, a lot of vintage shoes do something called dry rot. Clothes and purses can do it too, but shoes are the worst. So a great way to know if it has dry rot is if you just kind of twist the shoe a little bit, it's going to start to fall out. Like things in the sole are going to fall out. This does not, and it is a wooden sole, so most of the time that's not going to have any issues. But if it's a rubber sole, it often is going to dry rot, so you need to check that before you leave the store. The stuff that I got at the very beginning, the Ula Johnson, Reformation, all that kind of stuff, that came from where this stuff came from. Um, I just had happened to take pictures of those, so that's why it got lumped into the beginning. Um, but this last store that I went to was a Goodwill. The other ones were more local thrift stores. So as for pricing, why they're different, that's why. Um, but all these should have tags on them, so I should be able to tell you what I paid for them. At the last store, I grabbed these Gianni Benny heels. That's not, not a brand that I typically pick up in clothes, but a lot of their shoes are really trendy and popular. These are just a square toe heel that have these rhinestones. They're very popular like for weddings or for special occasions. So I like to pick up Gianni Benny heels if they're in good style, good condition, and good price. And I grabbed these for $6.59. I take a quick intermission to go put the dinner in the oven. I apologize for the lighting. It is probably absolutely terrible. It is literally 8.30 at night. Just put in pizza because my husband's coming home. So I'm sure the quality of this video is not very great, but please know that my heart is in the right place. Next, I have a J. Crew sweater. I love the balloon sleeves on this. It was the first thing that I saw before I even saw the tag. It is a size medium, and it is a newer style, if I remember correctly. Yes, it's a fall 22 style, so pretty new, and it is a cotton blend, which always does really well for me. Super cute, crew neck, balloon sleeve style. These chunky sweaters are what does best for me. Like, anything that feels like a vintage sweater, but it's not, does really well. I assume I'll probably list this for around 45 but I'm not 100% sure. Next is a new brand for me. Um, I knew that they carried shoes, but I didn't know they had other pieces. This is Lily for the future. I am editing this and I have since listed this jacket. They don't carry shoes. I think that I just thought this because they had a collab with Tiva, which is a shoe brand, but they don't have any shoes. They just do like outdoors wear and bags. The brand is Cotopaxi or Cotopoxy. I'm not 100% sure, um, but it is like an outdoors wear brand. It is a super cute jacket that I found on the men's. It's actually a woman's jacket. It's like a bomber style, but it has sweatshirt, sleeves, and hood. Um, it is a size of women's large, and I just thought it was super cute style, and comps looks like 50 plus, so I was happy to get it just to try it out, and I'll let you know how it does. I'm so sorry if you're in a different place now. I had to move my camera because it decided to take a little nap. So, I had to move all my stuff, and it is probably not in the same place that it was. But, going back to what I was talking about, Judith March is a very popular, colorful kind of women's wear brand. This specific sweatshirt was so popular on TikTok over Christmas 
I've seen it everywhere on the Preppy Girls. This specific one was sold at Queen of Sparkles. It's Queen of Sparkles is like a preppy southern boutique that sells all kinds of sparkly, colorful things. It's very popular among like southern rush girls, sorority girls. But I saw this everywhere um, on TikTok and so when I saw this I decided to grab it. And it looks like it was over $150 new, which is crazy. So I know it probably won't sell until Christmas time next year, but I thought it was too great to not go ahead and grab. Next, this is for a style bundle. It's just a J. Crew corduroy top. She had corduroy button downs on her bundle board, so I went ahead and grabbed this. And I got that for $6.09. Next, this is a top by Rails. Rails is really known for their button down shirts. Um, a couple weeks ago in my haul, I found a Rails sweatshirt and it has not sold yet. But this Rails button down shirt, it's 100% silk. And like I said last time, Rails always has a style name on the tag on the inside. This is the Rebel Top in blush spotted pattern, and it is a size small, but it's just a super cute button down shirt, which Rails is known for, so I think I'll probably list it around 40. Next, I have another Talbot's piece, which I don't normally pick up that often, but it is a Talbot sweater, and it just has the cutest little Scotty dogs wearing sweaters on it, so I think it'll do really well on my Instagram or if not, it'll do well on Poshmark. But it is a size medium, and it's a 2020 style, so it's pretty new. Um, I assume I'll sell this for around $30 to $35, and I got it for $6.79. Next, I have another Athleta piece. These are the Athleta Camden joggers. They're a size 2, and they're just a super cute athletic jogger kind of style. Um, joggers do really well for me from Athleta, and I knew they were newer because they had that style name on the tag. I grabbed these for $5.99. I don't know what they'll sell for, but I'm going to guess around $40. Next, these are a pair of Everlane sweatpants. Everlane is a like neutral, sustainable wear brand. They have a lot of basics and a lot of neutrals. This is just a plain black organic cotton sweatpant. Um, they're a size small, super cute wide leg sweat. Um, I don't know for sure what they're called or what their comps are. Or anything. I assume they won't be very much, probably around 30, but they were just a great style and in really good condition. And I got them for $5.99. Next, I got these Madewell pants. They are the Emmett crop pant. The Emmett pant does really well for me. It's just a wide leg high rise pant by Madewell. They're very popular. These are a little bit older. They are from 2018. But I think they should still do well because the Emmett still sells in this color on their website. It's just a little bit of an updated version. These are a size 27. I assume they'll sell for around 35. Next, I have these cute trousers by And Other Stories. I could be wrong in this, but I want to say that And Other Stories, H&M, and Koss are all owned by the same people, and And Other Stories is the higher tier of those brands. So it's just a cute little basic trouser. I've had a lot of their dresses in the past and some of their tops, but I've never had a pant, so I'm excited to see how these do. These are size 4, and they're just like a wide leg trouser, so I'm going to guess they'll probably be listed around 40, but I'm not positive. I feel like in the future again a couple of my videos got uploaded kind of out of order and I didn't realize until after that so if it looks different that's why this just was supposed to go a little bit earlier but all this stuff is also from that third thrift store. I have this Natural Life mini dress. Natural Life is a boho kind of brand that sells a lot of like free people-esque kind of styles and it does really well for me when I find their dresses. So this is a size small. I got it for $8.99. It doesn't sell for very much, probably only $25, but it should sell very quickly and you can usually find a cute stock photo. And I love that as a patchwork kind of style because that's really popular right now. Next, this is a very new anthropology style. Um, it is a jumpsuit. It has a super deep V-neck neckline, button up, and then these wide legs. Jumpsuits don't always do very well for me, but anthropology has some really cute ones that still do pretty well. This is a size small, and like I said on the last one, any new anthropology is going to say buy anthropology, and this brand is literally just buy anthropology. Um, so it's a newer style, and I'm hoping to sell it for around 75 to 100 based on comps. I need to do a little bit more research. I talked about this in my last haul, so if you haven't watched that, go back and watch it. The Anthropology Free People and Urban Outfitters all have an OB number, as they call it, or really just a style number. On their tag on the back, it's going to say OB and then a bunch of numbers. If you look up that OB and the numbers into Google, you're going to usually be able to find a name and a stock photo for that item. So that's something to remember, and that's how I was able to find this jumpsuit. Next, this is a Levi's top. I don't typically buy Levi's tops, but this is a super cute style. It has this Peter Pan collar, which is very popular right now. There's a brand called Ghani that kind of repopularized the Peter Pan collar. But this style as well for me, it is a cotton button down top. It is a size 1X, which I love finding larger sizes. And I'll probably sell this on Instagram for around 25 to 30 And I paid $6.09 for that one. Next is a Talbot's blazer. This Talbot's blazer, along with a ton of others, were by those J. Crew blazers, but I left all the other ones behind besides this one. It's a size 12, and I think that larger sizes in Talbot's do better for me. 
it's a tweed plaid kind of blazer, which that is the best kind of blazer for me in any brand. Um, I don't know what all this is at because I don't have a ton of experience, but I'm going to guess around $40 to $50, and I paid $6.99. Next, I have another blazer. This one is a vintage houndstooth blazer. The brand is CCF. Don't know it. But I love this kind of houndstooth style. Oversized blazers are still really popular for me on Instagram. Um, this one is a size 8 petite, but it's an oversized fit, and I assume it'll sell for around $35. And I paid $6.99 for that one, too. I think this is my last blazer. It is another J. Crew blazer, and it's the Schoolboy blazer. This is an older style. I don't even know what year this is. 2012. So it is very old. But any J. Crew blazer does really well for me. I'm still happy to pick it up if I can get it for a reasonable, pr reasonable price. This one is 100% cotton, and so I knew that it was great quality. Um, and it is a size 8, which is a good size too. Um, the Schoolboy blazer is one of those. The Park blazer, a bunch of styles like that have been popular for years and years and years, so not much has changed. This is not going to sell as much for those other J. Crew blazers that I had, but I assume it should still sell for around 30 to 40 Next, this is a brand that I've been finding a lot lately. It is Athleta. Um, these are just some black trousers by Athleta, and I got these on a new rack when I first walked in. These are the Stellar Flare trousers. Um, like I said last time on Athleta pieces, how to know it's a new piece is the style name will be right underneath the Athleta logo on the back of the tag. So make sure to look that up. Athleta also has a style number and, of course, a style name on their tag, so you can always look that up into Google and be able to find it pretty easily. Um, this is a newer style. I don't know what comps are, but I think they should be pretty good based on the style. And I paid $5.99 for these. Next, I have another Abercrombie dress. This one was next to the other one that I found. This is a puff sleeve midi dress, and it has this cutout detail in the front. I think this would be perfect for brides, so anyone who's looking for bridal functions, their bridal shower, or their honeymoon, or their bachelorette trip, I think this would be great. Um, this one is a size small, and it is a very new style. Like I said, newer Abercrombie does really well for me. Um, I will note that on Poshmark, it seems when I post them, I do get a lot of lowball offers, probably just because it's younger people who are typically shopping from Abercrombie. Um, but the comps seem to be pretty high on this, so I don't know what it all listed out, but I'm thinking 50 plus. Next, this is another brand to note. This brand is St. John. St. John has more formal wear pieces. They're actually very popular in the dog show community, so people who walk their dogs in dog shows wear a lot of St. John at dog shows. Also, if you're a Gilmore Girls girl, Emily Gilmore wears St. John exclusively on Gilmore Girls, so all of her matching skirt suits and pantsuits are all St. John. So the best thing with St. John is their matching skirt suits or pantsuits. They do super well on Poshmark, eBay, their Facebook group, specifically for dog walkers They buy St. John. Um, but any St. John that's vintage seems to do pretty well. These pants are fabulous. They're just a pink, almost like a denim, but they're more of a stretch. But they have St. John logos and gold hardware. They're just a great straight leg pant. I got them for $5.99. I don't know what they'll sell for because I don't really have experience in this kind of style. But I'm going to guess probably around 50 to 60. These are from fall 2003. They do have a date on the tag. But I've had St. John pieces in the past that have sold for me for $150 plus dollars for their sets. So definitely keep an eye out for St. John when you're looking. And if you find one piece, make sure to go look in the other pieces to see if you can find the set. Next, I have another pair of Levi's. These are the Levi's Wedgie Straight. This is one of the most popular styles for me to sell. Um, these are size 29, and they feel brand new, like they've never been washed. Like I said, they have a C9, PC9 number on the back that you're able to look up the style and the color of the denim. These are 29, and I think they should do really well. The wedgie straights are a very popular style, and I assume that I'll list these for around 50, and they'll sell for around 35 to 40. Next, I have this little mock neck for a style bundle. I have someone who's looking for a lot of turtlenecks to wear under t-shirts or sweatshirts, so I just grabbed this. The brand is just westbound, but it is brand new. And I paid $6.09 for it. And then last but not least, I have two pair of pants for a style bundle. These are a wide leg jean by Lane Bryant. Lane Bryant is super expensive new and they're really good condition. Lane Bryant is super expensive new and they're really good quality, but their resale just isn't very high. But these are a super cute wide leg pant by Lane Bryant. And they look to be just what my style bundle client was looking for. And then next I grabbed for the same style bundle client just a pair of like wide leg pants that you can dress up or dress down. They're new with tags. They're just like a ribbed wide leg pant that I thought would be super cute as an alternative like to leggings or sweats just to dress up like a t-shirt or sweatshirt a little bit more. And I paid $8.79 for the jeans except they were half off so I paid $4.30 something. And then I paid $5.99 for the pants. I had so much fun going through my thrift hauls today. 
This was the longest thrift trip that I've done by myself in a while. I typically thrift with my mom and my grandma on full day thrifts, but today I was by myself and it felt so long and so exhausting, but I had so much fun. Okay, I just pulled out my phone so I can go through all my numbers for today. Like I said, I came home with 72 items, which is great for me. I typically only get about 40 to 50 items a week and 30 of those go straight to Instagram. So it feels very good to have so many items at the beginning of the week. I got 72 items and that's from three different stores, one Goodwill and two local thrift stores. I spent $432.38, and that brings my cost of goods to $6.01 per item, which I am very happy with. I paid up for several of the items that I got today, so for my average cost of goods to still be about $6 is great. I aim to have a cost of goods that is under $7, ideally 5 to 6 so anything under 7 is great for me. Several of these items are going to style bundles, and then one of them is for me to keep for myself. The rest is going to be divided between Instagram story sales and then Poshmark eBay on my website. So about 20 of these items will be put on my Instagram story sales. I have a story sale every Thursday night on my Instagram stories where I sell my favorite items from the week for the lowest price for my Instagram followers. The rest I'll be listing on Instagram, Poshmark, and my website throughout the week. I try and list about 5 to 10 items per day. So this should last me throughout the week and then a little bit into next week. If you're interested in any of these items, please let me know though and I can send you all the sizing and pricing information. Otherwise, wait and stay tuned on my Instagram and on my Poshmark and on my website to see my new items that are being posted. I've had so much fun sharing my thrift hauls and my other reseller content here on YouTube, so if you've been liking that, please let me know. I've been loving longer form content and just getting to sit and chat with you about all the reseller things that are in my mind. I forget how much goes into what I pick at thrift store and what I bring home and what I list things at. A lot of this I've been doing for so long that it just seems so normal, like I don't even have to think about it anymore. So being able to go through like how much is this going to sell for, why do I want to sell this, why do I want to pick this up, how much do I pay for it, why is this a good style, having to say all that out loud is actually really good for me to know what I'm picking up and why. And I love to be able to give this knowledge over to you too. So thank you so much for sitting and chatting with me every week. If you're new here, I upload new videos every Friday afternoon, all about reseller content and working from home. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe down below. Let me know down below what your favorite thrift find was today from this haul. Mine is probably the Reformation or the Ulla Johnson, but I'm also in love with the Frogtown sweater. So let me know what your favorite item was. And as always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for being a part of a little bit of my closet.